Hello again, Acron fans, and welcome to this cast, replay cast between J Requiem and Cron Emirate. I'm Shadow Free CC3, your host, and we are on Mantanger Transfer. This is a map we haven't seen super recently. It's a fairly large map. It's got main base over here in the top left, top right corner, and bottom left corner, with expansions over just either north or south of the main bases, depending on the side, and another expansion at the northwest and southeast of the map with so really small expansions in the center, north and south. And other flat buildable areas that are not expansions but are still places you can plop down units and buildings if you need to, if you need the space. However, both players are playing Grecum, so I doubt space will be a concern. Here we are. So, we have Kronheimer in the bottom left corner. He is going for a main base. He is not expanding out anywhere else. Last game that I just casted with him, he went and put RPs around the map. Went everywhere around the map for RPs, so he's not going to do that this time. J Raccoon, on the other hand, is... Not on the other hand, he's doing the same thing. Keeping his RPs in his base. Not really going out too adventurous. He does have... Okay, that Octo is normal. He's using that Octo... This Octo here to... Is he scouting out with that, or is he just going to be using it to... Defend? I'm not sure exactly what he's defending for. This map is fairly large. Rushes aren't super popular or easy to pull off on here. Usually they won't hit for the two, two or three minute mark, so I don't see it being a great thing to do. Cryonimer is very quickly setting up an Octo for Progen, and getting a very fast Seppi as well. Looks like he might be going for a quick reef before turning this into an RP. Yep, there he goes. So I'm guessing a reef will be very soon coming. So see, G Raccoon has that Octo. We are... Wait, where'd that other Octo go? Nowhere. That Octo became an RP. So he has another Octo coming in for more RPs, so both players just developing their economy. Like I said, Cryonimer I think is going to be going for fast. Yes, he is! Fast Reef! There we go! So Cryonimer going for fast tech. I don't know if he's going to be rushing tech or he's just going for fast Reef for healing and then use that for tech later on. My guess is the latter, since trying to get tech at this stage in the game is going to be a pretty bad idea. Cryonimer does not have the economy to support Arians at this point, so I don't imagine he's going to rush for it. I would be impressed if he managed to pull it off, but I just don't see it. He only has three RPs on LC and to one on QP, four on LC pretty soon. He still does not have enough. He would need about five on LC and two or three on QP in order to support air units, even just getting one air unit, let alone an army of them. While Jerrick, on the other hand, has pretty much the same economy, continuing to build up. So both players building up almost identically, though Jerrick is focusing very heavily on this one liquid crystal crate, while Cryonimer is spreading himself out a bit more, and Cryonimer is going to be really benefiting from that pretty soon. Like, probably in about three minutes game time or so, Cryonimer's going to be benefiting from the fact that he does not have one crate emptied and then all these RPs are going to have to move over. Because Jericoon, pretty soon this crate's going to be empty. In about two or three game minutes, he's going to have to move these RPs over to these two LC crates, while Cryonimer won't. So Cryonimer's going to have a slight economic advantage at that point. And Cryonimer getting a very quick Octopod as well. I Like I said, the Reef is mainly for healing. He's probably not sure what Jericoon is going for. He has not scouted out Jericoon, so he doesn't know that Jericoon is playing Grecum unless he's listening for what Jericoon is actually building. So I'm not surprised in Hero yet. Jericoon is actually looks like he's moving his RPs in advance of when he'll need to. And getting himself another Seppi. So both players have their reefs. Though Jericoon getting another Seppi, probably for another reef for better bubble wrap, better defense. Both players, it looks like, are kind of paranoid, actually. And Cryonimer, here we are. Now he is getting his advanced structures, he is getting himself prepped up for Spire and for air units. He could use another QP RP though. He really could. And I'm guessing this Octo will be that RP. Though it could very well just... Actually no, that Octo won't be the RP. That Octo will be part of the Progen Triad. This Octo will be another LC RP, which at this point I think may be excessive. Jericoon is about a minute down from here. Has his Reef, has does not have advanced structures. He is getting a, he is getting a Seppi and a Faro though in advance of advanced structures. Though I think he might actually be expanding with that. It might be just a duo to go out in the world. And not for Aspire. So, given that, Cryonimer is slightly ahead in terms of tech. And J Raccoon, it looks like he does have both of his... Well, he's Octopod going out to explore this area, this north expansion. And yes, he is sending these guys out to expand over to the northwest. Rather risky. It's further away than southeast for the northeast start, but... Cryonimer is not going for that base, so Cryonimer will not be able to spot that in time. And yes, here is the second QPRP, and, and another third QPRP. Okay, now he's safe. Now he's got a good economic base for air units. 
just before he was a little bit too low. And at the three minute mark, he is actually jumping back. He's jumped back about three minutes from when we were looking before when he had his air unit set up. Not sure exactly what he's doing with this. I'm I'm intrigued. And he is going for an octopod attack, an edge attack with his octopod. Not a bad idea since he doesn't know. Oh, and how about that? Jaracoon is also going for an attack, however, an attack on the expansion while Carnivore is going for an attack in the main base. So Jaracoon is so both players are going for this edge attack. Oh, edge attack. Jericho's going for the attack about two minutes after Crown Amaranth is. So Crown Amaranth is going to be hitting pretty hard once that actually happens, though. And yes, the Octopod is coming in here. Should be hitting around the five minute mark. And I would be very curious to see if the Octopods meet up. If Jericho's Octopod crashes into Crown Amaranth's Octopod before it hits the base, but I don't know. We'll find out shortly. And it looks like Crown Amaranth is actually jumping away, letting the green time of take care of that. And Jericoon is building up this expansion over the northwest. Karnamrit has no idea what's going on yet. He hasn't actually checked this out. Neither player is really scouting out their expansions to see what's going on if the other player has taken it or what expansions are being taken. Jericoon's much more concerned about this than Karnamrit is. Karnamrit very focused on getting his main base built up, not at all focused on checking what expansions exist, and he is getting a spire as well. So I think Jericoon's going to have a bit of an advantage at this point, being both that his economy is better spread out and hidden somewhat. And it looks like Karnamrit is actually. Hmm, I'm not sure if that was... No, it looks like his Octopod was stopped there. So yes, his Octopod is actually hanging out right in front of the main base. Jericoon has jumped back a bit, however. And if we look at here... No, it's hard to tell. Oh, no wonder, because I'm not looking at Chronomus' point of view. So yeah, from Chronomus' point of view, it looks like this Octopod is meant to be here. He's just leaving it here. Interesting. Probably leaving it there for scouting through what's going on with this other Octopod coming around the side. I don't know if Chronomus has responded to this yet. He doesn't really need to worry about it. He does have his Spire. He just needs to get... Ah, Farabod. Like I said, he's going to get early air units, and from there he'll be fine. However, it's not know about Jericho's expansion over in the northwest, or doesn't appear to know about it. He hasn't, hasn't said anything to scout it out, so there's no way he could know about it. So Jericho, like I said, at a bit of an advantage now. Although he does have this crate exhausted, which is a bit, which is a problem. So Jericho, in an iffy state right now. I don't really know what to make of it. He really needs to move these crates, or these QP, or, sorry. He needs to move his RPs onto QP. He needs to move these Octos just... Oh, well, either use them or move them away, use them to attack. He does have the Octos over here, but they do not have the money they needed in order to actually be built in the first place. So that's not going to work very well for him. And it looks like the Octopods have met up. And it's rather even, too. So these... Here, our Cranamer's Octopod is going to be meeting up with the Octopod coming down from J-Raccoon. And it looks like they will be very evenly matched. Yep. However, it would appear that Crown Amaranth's Octopod will be able to get away just slightly. And yes, Crown Amaranth's Octopod barely living with 9 health left at the end. Although Jericho is moving himself out of the way to get into a better position. Not sure he's going to be able to get the first shot off this time, and no he is not. So once again Crown Amaranth will be able to win this engagement. While well, Jericho, however, is coming from another Octopod, and that Octopod, the second Octopod here, will be able to deal with this. So the expansion is going. So Jericho is. Well, he's covering the expansion with attacks. So Cronimer's Octopod will not be able to get away too easily, although Cronimer has moved. Oh, he's moved it around. So Jericho will now just go into the base, try to attack, and looks like he won't be able to the Octopod. So Cronimer will be able to successfully harass once that Octopod gets in. Now, Cronimer in his own base, he is. Not going for air units. He's getting a Faro here for... Well, it's the Faro he used for Spire. Well, he will get... We we know he gets Faro pods in about two minutes or so game time. But this Octopod is doing some harassment. Some serious harassment. This is actually getting kind of problematic for J-Raccoon. And his own Octopods are only halfway to Crown Amaranth's base, and Crown Amaranth will be getting his Faro pods soon enough that it won't be a problem for him to defend. So J-Raccoon... I think he might be paying for this early expansion. Like I said, he doesn't have a whole lot of money to actually use it. And yeah, he is getting a Faro. Not sure how well it's going to be for defense. I guess Farabods might be useful, and a Farabod, like I said, is coming up. But I don't know how Jericho is going to be able to deal with this. The Octopods. One of the Octopods is going for an attack on the natural expansion. He's assuming Carnivore is going to be expanding, which is a false assumption. Carnivore has not left his main base at all. And Jericoon trying to defend the Octopod with a Faro. This will not be successful, for obvious reasons. The Faro is way too weak to deal with it. Not a bad idea to keep a couple of them just in the base for defense from the Faro Pod that's inevitable and coming. 
And this crown armor is definitely sending that Faro Pod in. Here we go, right here. That's our Faro Pod. And that's going to be a problem for Jericho if he does not deal with it when he gets the chance, which is now. This is his only chance to really get his Faros to deal with the Faro Pod to actually detect it. That being said, the Arcticus is here. That can be used for detection. Still, he's in a bad spot right now. And, like I said, the Faro Pod is cloaked, so the Octopod cannot do anything against it. The Octopod cannot see it, cannot touch it. So, completely be able to destroy that Octopod with impunity. I don't see Jay Raccoon getting out of this. I know it seems a bit too close to call, and this Octopod will be destroyed pretty quickly by the Octo and Faro pair. But Jay Raccoon does not have the defense, he does not have the tech. He's going to be... He's now on the back foot pretty heavily. And he has no detection that's really that mobile either from the Faro Pod. Cryovern is just ahead in pretty much every way. Economically as well, he has more RPs, he has better RP positioning. His crates, however, are almost done. So that, well, his QP crates are fine, but his LC crates are starting to get pretty close to done. Still, Cryovern is in great position to defend any expansions he may want to take in the future. And I think that J. Raccoon may have expanded too soon. It looks like he is not actually taking advantage of this duo over here in the Northwest. I think he may have forgotten about them, actually. That being said, he's pretty close to the unplayable pass, so he can't do much with them. And no, he is, he is in fact using them to expand. He has not forgotten about them completely. Still, he is in a hard... He is in a very hard spot. He has only one order left. He's very close to the unplayable pass. Very little he can do right now. And Kron Aberrant, he has pretty much the entire world on his plate. He has Sebi set up just in case Jericon goes for counterattack, which won't happen. He has almost enough resources to get Chronoporting up, which he will certainly get as soon as he gets the chance. Farpod just exploring around, seeing what Jericon has expanded to, choosing the wrong corner expansion. It's his correct assumption that Jericon has expanded, but incorrect in choosing which expansion he's gone to. Still, Jericon will be... He will be in a... At least spread out enough that he can recover to an extent if something happens to his main base but not enough money to actually save it should such a situation arise. I really think he should be... I'm really surprised he's not gone for advanced structures. I am very shocked that he's not gone for advanced structures this late in the game. He's not gotten far pods or subby pods or anything, and this is going to be hard for him to deal with it. Like, he's got Octos coming in towards the southeast. He will see that the far pod is here, or at least here that the far pod is here. see the missiles and everything. But this Octo can't do anything, I guess. That even if it could see it, Octos can only attack ground. So there's not much going for that. And for the Northwest base, Jericoon does have... Well, he has a bit set up. But like I said, he does have the money to... He does have the base to support air units. This is the base to support advanced structures. And getting far as semis is all well and good, but... At this stage in the game, he does need to have air units. At least a couple of pods. And... Here we see an Octopod is coming into Cronarmon's base to deal some damage to start harassing these RPs, but it's a little bit late. Cronarmon has enough money to actually get whatever he wants at this point. Like, once he gets about 50 more LC, he's going to have enough for Chronoporting. Now, Jericoon finally getting advanced structures at the 1123 mark. Like I said, rather late in the game, but he can still pull it off, and it looks like the Sebi and Faro setup will be able to take care of this Faro pod with very little problem. So Crown is going to have to move away that attack. He's not going to be able to use that attack ultimately. Unless he wants to just throw the fire pot away, which is a terrible idea. Those things are expensive. But, however, Crown Armor is now moving out. And he's moving out in force. Moving out RPs, getting some reefs around here, getting his Octopus and Faros over in the front. He is he is pushing out. So Crown Armor has decided he's turtled up in his one base long enough, and he is now pushing out, taking out the south side of the map, taking his exp natural expansion, Using his far pod to cover this while this happens. And Jericho does not have any real tools to harass this as this happens. Like I said, no air units, and he has this expansion, this duo over here in the corner, which is actually kind of hard to find. He's in a nice little spot here on the ramp. So it's difficult to actually see that it's here, but if it's ever spotted, it's done. And the I said, advanced structure is halfway done at the 1133 mark. Cronamer is about half a minute up from here. And we see Farpod. Farpod attacking at a great time. Very little here to defend against this. Jericoon does not have the defenses he had last time the Farpod came in. And it looks like Jericoon doesn't have much of a chance. Cronhammer. Cronhammer is in a great spot economically. He is in a great spot militarily. Technologically, yeah, he's ahead. He's got Chronoporting now. This Farpod will be Chronoporting back now. Once it gets to here, it'll Chronoport. And. 
As soon as, as soon as we see that, there we go. Jericoon is now even in a worse spot than he was before, having his LCRPs being heavily attacked. I don't think he was relying that heavily on LC up to this point, but that being said, that's a pretty... That's not the shallowest uppercut. That's going to be a bit problematic for Jericho to deal with. And he's probably going to lose two or three RPs before it's actually dealt with. Losing at least two, looks like a third's going to go down fairly soon, so Jericho, he does have advanced rushes and chrono boarding at this point in the future, further into the future, the 14 minute mark. He has everything he needs, but I don't think he's going to be able to maintain that. He is sending some Faros back to help defend. I don't see them successfully defending. At this point, he's already lost three RPs, and the Faro that was sent back is going to die as well. Jericho really needs to send some Sebis or get Sebi Pods to send those back. At this point, just sending Faros back is not going to be successful. And unfortunately, one of the Faros looks to get Chrono Fragged into the RP, which is rather unfortunate. But he is moving them around so that they don't. And, yeah, serious. So he successfully managed to get those Chrono Ported back without problems. Still, like I said, this isn't going to last long. Once the green time wave comes along, Jericho will not have enough money to Chrono Port. So this is a paradox waiting to happen. And there it goes. So you can see the green time wave. Because Jericho does not have Chrono Porting at that point. He does not have... He won't have the money to get it from the looks of it. No, he does not. Losing those LCRPs is fairly large. Major blow to his economy, and that's going to probably seal the deal. As you can see, Kronamer has established himself quite well along the south base. His main base is all actually not that well defended, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be at this point. And while Jericoon does have these LCRPs over in the northwest, they aren't doing too much on their own. So I do not see much going in J Raccoon's favor. Kronamer really just needs to push. If Kronamer goes to the push right now, he has won. J Raccoon has nothing to deal with this. I think Kronamer's... Yeah, really, I've got to be honest. Kronamer, the longer he waits, the worse off he's going to be. Because J Raccoon will have a chance to rebuild, have a chance to get himself going again. But if Kronamer just goes now, attacks now... Especially since J Raccoon does not have the money yet to rebuild himself up to get Chrono Porting. He does have Legal Class, but he doesn't have any Pod Class units to make a triad with. So he can't actually build Legal Class units. So right now... Kronamer is going to be able to win. And Kronamer's actually found the Northwest expansion and is dealing quite a bit of damage to it, too. So Kronamer's managing to get rid of the Northwest expansion. J Raccoon is... has no economy left. He has only what he has right now. Most of his QP, he can convert that to Liquid Crystal. He will probably be doing that to try to recover himself, try to jumpstart his economy again. But at this point, I think it may still... It's going to be too late. Kronamer still has more... Just He has more. More units, more money, more tech is in a better position right now, and Jericho is trying to send some monsters to defend, but he will lose them in a big melee battle. And of course, it doesn't help the <laughs> Chronomer's Sebipod's coming in as well to help support these Octos, so yeah. Chronomer has won this game. Jericho, however, the more he's left alone, the better chance he has. He is getting a Spire as well, which means he will be able to start building up areas of his own. Not a whole lot of money with which to do so, but he does have some money still. And he can still convert QP to LC. And get a few Sepipods and maybe Farapod even. He might actually be able to come back from this if he's really careful about it. But it's going to be difficult. And like I said, Kronheimer, if he just goes for a push, just right now goes for a push, he's going to win. And it looks like Kronheimer is not going for that push. He is taking some damage, but he's... And like I said, he took the Northwest expansion. But he is not going for that one big push. See the three Octopods here. See the Sepipod here dealing with the Octo, and I don't see where a Faropod would be. Because I would expect Faropod, I'd expect maybe Legal Class, and Jericho has actually gotten himself back into Chrono Porting. He's gotten himself back into the Chrono Porting Club, and that's something that Kronheimer did not want to have happen. Like I said, Kronheimer's waiting has not paid off. Jericho did manage to get himself his economy back going at least a bit. He doesn't have any other expansions, though. So Kronheimer is not in a great spot right now. But he's, he's still in a much better spot than Jericho. He's not as good a spot as he'd like to be. Because, like I said, he could have won five minutes ago. And then Kronheimer is a little bit timid about attacking. He doesn't have everything linked to the Arcticus. So I'm a bit surprised he's actually... I don't know. He's not really set that up as best he could. Still, everything's pretty much in a good position. I'm not sure what he's waiting for. He might be waiting for the Implable Fast Edge, which is now. He might be waiting for Jericho to attack first. Jericho going to be out of position, maybe, although Kronheimer, I'm not sure how much he cares about that. 
And as you can see, his entire base is just floating into the south. I'm just not sure what he's waiting for. He, he does see Cranimer is... Cranimer is aware that Jericho is moving out. He does have his Octo and Progen mode... Or Octopod and Progen mode, I mean, that is spotting everything going on. So he doesn't see... He does know that this is now a good time. Well, as good a time as any. They're all good times. You just should move. Attack. Just finish off Jericho because Jericho really doesn't have much of a chance. All he has is enough QP to chronoport a few times and be annoying. But if he's really good with that, if really smart with that, he'll actually be able to win. So Cronheimer needs to attack now if he wants his best chance to win. Jericho, however, like I said, he is going for the chronoports, he is going for being annoying. And he's not able to defend what he has, though. I mean, the southwest base doesn't have anything to defend with. But he has a spire, he has enough to build some units with, and like I said, he has plenty of QP. So he can send at least five or six units chronoporting with that much QP. This is going to be interesting. I don't... Like I said, I still don't see Cronheimer losing unless Cronheimer decides not to do much. If Cronheimer just decides to wait in his base and turtle up and turtle up and turtle up, assuming that J Raccoon has a ton of stuff going on, then it might not... might actually work in J Raccoon's favor. However, it looks like Cronheimer is setting up Auto Hierarchy and Smart Alley's name as Com Hub, or as Mound, should say, to be quite useful. And from there, he should be able to go for an attack, because Articus will have everything linked to it. And then he can just go. He can attack. That'll be done. I still do not see that happening, though. Cronheimer is... He has a Sebi Pod in a position, good position to scout out. He has Sebi Pods going around just seeing what Jericoon is up to. Possibly seeing what's, what defenses there are for this. And he is actually trying to chronoport to defend against this Octopod attack, to defend the Octopod he had. However, Sebi's coming in to support the Octopod attack. We'll be able to get rid of the Sebi Pod in the past. So like I said, Jericoon is just building up and building back up. He actually has a bit of a chance. His, he has two Sepis over here in the Northwest that will be able to take care of these Northwest expansion, Northwest RPs from Crown Aberrant. Mind you, Crown Aberrant's main base right now is in the South and slightly in the Natural expansion. Also a bit in the Southeast, but I'm just surprised Crown Aberrant has not gone for an attack yet. He really, he is, he is slipping, his advantage is slipping as time goes on. Granted, he is still getting himself, he still has a good economy, he's still getting himself a lot of units. But his advantage is slipping. I mean, I, it's just worth noting, he is starting to fall back in terms of what he had. His position is evening out with J Raccoon, and even though J Raccoon doesn't have a whole lot of economy right now, he is still dealing some damage on the periphery, and with some clever chronoporting, could actually deal a bit of damage to the main base. But I don't see him doing that right now. He does have... Actually, wait, wait there is one chronoport coming on here. Ah, that's the chronoport we saw in the northwest base that was already the attack, the Seppi attack. So nothing new there, but it looks like J Raccoon is still trying to be clever. He is moving around, he is checking out what's going on, and like I said, he is building up. He's, he's trying to get these RPs into position so that he can obviously get his economy built back up again and get more units and get more stuff going on. And Cronheimer, however, has half a dozen semi-pods, half a dozen Faros, good three or four octopods, and few Seppies. He's got enough of an army to take care of pretty much anything at this point. And they should be all linked to the... They are not all linked to the Arcticus. The Seppi pods are not linked to the Arcticus. Everything else is. But I'm not sure what he's up to, like I said. He's got... This is really confusing me. I don't get what Cronheimer is thinking. Because he was in a great position already. And he's not taking advantage of it. And like I said, I, he might be timid, he might be afraid that Jericho's going to have this massive magical force in the back that's going to tear him to shreds, but he doesn't. And I just don't understand why Cronheimer is letting Jericho build up and letting Jericho just go unhindered. But yet he is. That's exactly what's going on. And Sebipod coming in here to help defend, help attack this northwest, sorry, north, southeast base. The northwest base having been a lost cause already. I just don't get what's going on here. This is getting rather annoying to see that neither player is doing much. I'm I'm really getting quite concerned about this. There is, however, a large chronoport going on. It looks like... No, just that one semi-pod in the southeast. Really, I do not know what Cronheimer is waiting for. He won this game ten minutes ago. Why has he not closed this off? I'm, I'm almost... I'm concerned that this replay is not accurate. 
I am genuinely concerned about that. If it weren't for this heavy pot attack happening now, because I didn't notice they weren't attached to the Arcticus, the heavy pot attack happening gives me faith that this is actually how it happened. But I'm just concerned about the tactics. I'm concerned about the thinking behind this. Cronamron is playing paranoid, and he's won. There's no way Jericho can get out of the economy to actually deal with what Cronamron has, and I'm just surprised Cronamron is playing so paranoid. I mean, at the very least, send your stepping pods around, check out all the bases, figure out what Jericho has. But he is kind of doing that, and you can see easily that Jericho has nothing. So I don't know why he's playing so paranoid. He's playing unreasonably paranoid. And he's focused very heavily on taking care of this economy instead of just dealing with the main base, taking care of everything Jericho has, and finishing him off. So I'm very surprised at this course of action. Like I said, I mean, this is the sort of thing I can understand a Grecan player doing in the really early game. We don't have a lot of scouting going on. You don't know what your opponent's up to, and yeah, they might have bases around the map you don't know about. They might have hidden economy, they might have hidden production. But at this stage in the game, you have SEBI pods, you can just send them around the map at your leisure. Just send a bunch of them on patrol routes all the way around, all across all the resource points and all across the points in between resource points, and then when you're done, satisfied, send out a big attack when you're sure you're going to be able to just win with it. But no, Jericho is not doing that. He has everything attached to the Arcticus. Now he's sending out his main attack. Now he's seen it, but like I said, he's seen it what was relevant 15 minutes ago. It's not changed. The main base is pretty much the same. So I'm just surprised at the way Cryon is playing. Because like I said, Jericho actually had a comeback. He was starting to get a comeback chance. The longer that Cronamorant was waiting, the better chance Jericho had to come back. Now, Cronamorant, at this point, has won. He has actually secured his victory, destroyed the main triad, and... There are, there are some Faros here that could become an Arcticus being used to rebuild. And there's a Seppi here, and the Seppi's over here. No, Seppi over here. That could be still somewhat used to rebuild, but... Now, now Cronamorant has secured it, which is... Finally. Now, you don't mean to sound impatient, but it's just, there's a lot of scouting you can do with Seppi Pods, and even if you had to echo it out, it's not a big deal at this stage in the game. It's really early game, it's a problem. It's something you have to be concerned about early on. But it's not something you have to be concerned about when you're 25 minutes into the game. You have Pod Class, you could easily get Legal Class, you have Chrono Porting. So now Jericoon is done. Now Jericoon's probably going to surrender fairly soon. Sparpod's coming in, taking out the periphery. And Sepipod's taking care of the main base. A little backwards, but okay. Farbots are better suited for main base heart, just destruction or assault. Sepipods are faster. They're better suited for the side harassment, harassing the periphery, harassing all of the side expansions and everything that players may do, but... Nope, looks like... Still, Kronheimer's going to win with this. This is, this is the game. I just... I'm surprised Kronheimer took so long. I really am. And yeah, Jericho is actually going for this. He's trying to rebuild, trying to get a reef going. He has a Sepi Nefaro. The Sepi Nefaro he already had built up, the secondary triad. They are going to be destroyed pretty quickly, however. Still, like I said, this is just surprising to me. I just find it odd how much time Cranmer took, how paranoid Cranmer was about this whole enterprise. Still, Cranmer is in a great... Oh. No, Cranmer... No, he actually... He either got fended off or ran away. This is making no sense to me at all. And granted, I say that from the perspective of an observer, being able to see what both sides are doing, but it still makes no sense to me at all, just considering how much Kron Emerant could reasonably expect Jericho to have. I'm really surprised at Kron Emerant not, like I said, not assaulting the main base with Farapods, not going for main attacks, not... And he is now moving his Faropods into a better position to attack. No, he's going for the southeast. Like I said, I don't know why he is going for the periphery first. Or at least the periphery with his entire army. He has two Arcticuses, so he could easily just split it up and go from there. But no, he is not going for that. And I find this very surprising. And Jericho looks like he is probably taking some damage to the Unplayable Pass that will be propagating with the Blue Time Wave. So the main base... Okay, the main base has ultimately been destroyed by Chronoported Sepipods. And it looks like Chronoported Farapod as well. But I'm just surprised at the length of this. I really am. I, I I know I'm harping on this. Because general rule of thumb, if you're in an advantageous position in a game, take advantage of that advantage. Like That advantageous position is a resource. 
you spend it to try to win. Now, you can spend it either on... Because you're, you're spending is time. You have basically acquired extra time by putting your opponent in a position where they have to rebuild to be on your terms again. So you can spend that time either getting economy going, or you can spend that time getting military going, or you can spend that time risking it all for an attack to actually win the fight. And depending on the stage of the game determines which one is the most important, but when you're at 20 minutes in the game, and you've already taken out your opponent's economy several times, then... Actually, not even 28 minutes in the game, 20, 15, 20 minutes in the game. Then that's the stage where you got to think about actually doing some serious damage. And scouting around the map, a really important thing to do is sending units around the map, especially on patrol routes, like a couple units here and there, just on patrol routes around the map, finding things. And then when you see them actually find something, you see damage in the timeline, then you go back and check where they are and what you can do about it. So, like I said, I'm kind of surprised at Crown Amaranth's decision making, but... He has one, pretty much. Jericoon does have this one octopod, but he has no ways of rebuilding. And Jericoon has surrendered. <sighs> Phew, that was quite a long game. So I hope you enjoyed that. Admittedly, a little bit, a little bit long at the end there, but still, very good demonstration about how you have to keep in mind what your opponent is up to, and scout around, make sure your opponent is doing certain things, and. Especially for new players, and Karnam is not a new player, but I know this is a common mistake that new players to RTS games make a lot, is this idea that their opponents are somehow magical, or they somehow have some natural advantage, or something that they have that's going to just make them have magically larger armies, or magically better economy. And no, that's not the case. They always have as much as you do. In most games. There, there are a couple of games where you have some things that are unlockable, or some things that are a bit different, or there are natural imbalances that are problematic. But assuming a balanced competitive game, your opponent starts on the same footing you do, and whatever they have, you can have. And whatever you can have, if you're playing as well as you can, is probably a reasonable estimate as to what they can have. Especially if you scout out and you see what they do have. So I hope you enjoyed that, and I'm just going to take a small break for a little while, and we'll be probably back later on, but for now, just wish you all good night, and have a solid Remembrance Day. <laughs>